In Chicago Soldier Field last Sunday, many fans mourned the retirement of all-time NFL halfback Gale Sayers. But Chicago's new coach, Abe Gibron, found a new friend, second-year running back Jim Harrison, who had previously been known, if at all, as Joe Moore's running mate at Missouri. Now that Joe Moore was hurt again, the burden of the Chicago ground game fell to Jim Harrison, number 35. Against Atlanta, Harrison carried 20 times for 113 yards. Gale Sayers would have approved. Even the officials were impressed. Jim Harrison climaxed a brilliant opening day performance with a fourth quarter touchdown, which did not win the game, but which won a standing ovation from the Soldier Field throng. Despite Jim Harrison's heroics, the Bears' longest run of the day was a quarterback keeper by Bobby Douglas. <laughs> to complement his cannonball running style, Douglas used his cannon arm to fire a touchdown to rookie tight end Bob Parsons from Penn State. In slow motion, it is possible now to analyze each move. The fake to the running back, the drop back, the step up, and then the cannon fires. Number 82, second year tight end Earl Thomas held on long enough for a touchdown. But the Bears weren't always so fortunate. Number 71, Falcon defensive end John Zook made several big plays, including one of the game's biggest. When number 69, Mike Lewis, caused a fumble, Zook scooped up the bouncing ball and instantly became an offensive hero. Zook's touchdown opened the floodgates for the Falcons, and Atlanta runners poured through, including a new addition to the Falcon fold, number 43, former Packer Dave Hampton. Falcon quarterback Bob Barry accounted for three more touchdowns, one to last year's rookie sensation Ken Burrow, number 82. Bob Berry sneaked for another score and capped a great opening day for the Falcons when he hit fullback Art Malone for a 57-yard touchdown. In a wild opener in Chicago, Van Brocklin's Falcons outscored Gibron's Bears, score 37-21.